Hi everyone, uh, I'm Absita Samal, Product Manager at Microsoft. And today we are going to talk about machine learning and AI for product managers. So there are three topics in our agenda which we are going to cover. The first being the different stages in an ML product and contribution of PM at each stage. Uh, second is the trade-offs that we need to consider while building ML products. And third is ethics. The need of ethics in AI and the principles to use AI responsibly. So why is ML important? Why should you be even worried about this? So uh, we might have seen this Venn diagram towards the right, where the PM sits at the center of uh, business, UX, and tech. I've added another uh, circle, statistics and ML, because it is so crucial for PMs to make data-driven decisions. Uh, PMs take data-driven decisions to enable consistent growth, increase customer satisfaction, gain competitive advantage, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And ML helps in making those data-driven decisions for PMs. Instead of manually calculating rules by analyzing data, you can now just feed the data to let an algorithm do the heavy lifting of figuring out the rules and logic, etc. Also, the second point is that any non-ML set of rules would generalize things for all users, fit them in one bucket, when really every user is different and we need to personalize the product for them. ML is the only reasonable way to truly personalize your product for every user, and that helps in driving customer satisfaction as well. So what is ML? This is the definition which we can find in books, etc. that it's the study which gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. But if you look into it, it's basically an algorithm and you give immense quantities of data to it and it outputs data-driven recommendations and identification of patterns to you. So many of the products that we see nowadays use ML. Uh, these are some of, uh, some of the examples of ML in products. Uh, for example, the clip and poster shown to you for movies, movies in Netflix is personalized based on interest. For example, for the same movie, Goodwill Hunting, comedy fans will see this kind of image, this kind of poster for them, while the romance fans will see another kind of poster for them. Also, like the comments which are shown in the top for any post on LinkedIn is also uh, determined based on ML. Portrait effect in photos is a product of ML. Uh, the travel booking websites can predict the purpose of your trip based on destination, number of people, number of days, etc. Like, is it a romantic vacation? Is it a family get together, college reunion, school reunion, etc., etc. And uh, even search results are based on the relevance to the query. So there are four stages in building an ML product, and we will identify what, what is the role of a PM, what are the top considerations for a PM in each of the four stages. So the first stage is identifying the need of ML. Why, why do we need ML? Is it Do we need to invest in ML or are simple rules sufficient? Stage two is building an ML product, actually. Then the third is iterating on ML product, and uh, then finally evaluating the metrics to see if the ML which we have used in product is successful, is it meeting users' expectations or not. So uh, going to the first stage now, identifying the need of ML, uh, we need to think about this question because uh, it takes multiple iterations to build some uh, ML product. It's very costly to build. It needs a lot of data for effective learning. And so we need to keep in mind, do we need ML or um, simple rules, heuristics, et cetera, are sufficient? So the first is stage of the product. So if it's an early stage product, we might not have data at, at an initial stage. And having good amount of data is a primary requirement for ML products. Second is time afforded for release. So ML algorithms might need several iterations to build something that matches with user expectations. Do we have sufficient time for multiple iterations and requirements? The third is amount of high quality data which is available. So we need to learn users' preferences, like the ML model learns in users' preferences through data. And if we don't have high quality data, then the model cannot be built easily. So that's, that's something to keep in mind uh, while building this. And then the fourth one, last and most important one is contribution to the core value of product. So is it like solving a core pain point for user or is it like a nice to have feature and some rules can solve it instead of ML? So if you think like a machine learning algorithm will give you 100% boost, then a heuristic will usually get you 50% of the way there. 
uh, for example, if you are trying to rank apps in an app marketplace like Google Play Store, etc., you could simply use like install rate or number of installs as tools for ranking them. If you are detecting spam, then filtering out publishers that have sent spam before is a good way to uh, do that. If you need to rank contacts, then ranking the most recently used contact highly, or even ranking them alphabetically works. So, if machine learning is not absolutely required for a product, don't use it unless you have uh, sufficient amounts of data, sufficient quality of data. So here uh, there is a cartoon which says that, uh, which like exemplifies this thumb rule of ML that we should employ ML when there are too many rules to make and maintain. Going forward, uh, we go to stage two, which is building ML products and what are the UX considerations while uh, building them. So first is that users expect some level of predictability. You need to indicate what is being driven by ML and why users are seeing this result. So basically, the core theme is that it should help in solving a pain point for users rather than causing some randomness and confusion for users. For example, Facebook shows why am I seeing this? Instagram separates like the recommended portion and the feed portion to show what is driven by pure heuristics and what is driven by ML. And um, uh, so this this is something which helps in driving a little bit of predictability, reproducibility uh, when we are using ML and products. So users should be also able to give feedback to the model, personalize the results in a model. So the key value of ML is that it can learn a user's preferences much better than a classic algorithm. And if users wants to tweak the behavior of the ML, they should be given an uh, given an option to tell what they like, what they don't like, and tweak the experience uh, which they receive through the ML model. So you can see this pattern in YouTube where uh, feedback can be given to help model understand your preferences uh, better. You are not interested, you want more of this, less of this, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So uh, going forward with stage two, uh, what are the feature considerations uh, while building an ML product? So exactly what is features? What is feature engineering? So uh, it is putting in domain knowledge to reduce complexity of data and make patterns more visible to learning algorithms. So it basically means that what are the key influencing features for your model. Uh, for example, if a user buys a particular brand very frequently, that might be an important feature uh, for the model which is recommending products for the user to buy. So um, the key uh, contribution of PM here is that they identify those key factors, those influencers, uh, through their domain knowledge by user research or through data analysis and help in uh, putting those key features in the model so that the complexity of data is reduced and patterns can be more uh, patterns can be made more visible. Uh, so, uh, like when we create an ML model, there are basically uh, three stages to it. First is like reducing the complexity and volume of data. So, your uh, features that you would select would uh, intend would be intended to remove outliers and totally irrelevant data, so that your corpus of data can be reduced to a more uh, uh, like a a more specific set uh, uh, which from which the pattern identification would be easier. Like the second stage is actually finding patterns and making productions, uh, making predictions. So lesser, more relevant data is now there. And now you are identifying features will help, which will help to find patterns. In it. Then the third is personalization. So personalization on top of models output uh, so that it can be uh, like uh, made fit for very specific user needs, etc. So there are different kinds of features which you might need to build at each stage of this uh, uh, of building this ML product. First one being like how to reduce complexity. Second is how do you make the patterns more visible uh, to the learning algorithm. And third is like how do we personalize um, a model's output for specific users. So PM's contribution is uh, identifying these factors and affecting a model behavior at each stage. Now going on to stage three, how do we iterate on an ML product? So uh, the first one is user feedback. Um, like uh, whenever user gives feedback, we get to know whether 
the perception of relevance, the perception of uh, what ML is doing, is it matching user's expectation or not? Are there any features which are missing, which users deem to be relevant, but model does not uh, uh, consider them right now and should we add those features to the model to make it more relevant? So that's that's uh, one way of getting continuous user feedback and then iterating on ML product based on that. Second is a uh, golden data set. So uh, we can use manually annotated data sets, which are annotated through humans for comparing like the product uh, predicted performance given by a model with the expected performance, which uh, the uh, humans have annotated and decided to be uh, the best. So there are different companies like Amazon Mechanical Turk, Clement, Crowdflower, etc., which uh, help uh, in getting those uh, like annotations done by users and that can be used to create manually annotated data sets and comparing the performance of ML product with it. The third is AB experiment. So uh, to establish causality between the model improvements and the product metrics, uh, it could be good to see how uh, a control group uh, in AB experiment is performing against the treatment group in, in the experiment. The fourth is data refreshes. So it might so happen that uh, we have trained model on older data and we have deployed it, but it's not reflecting users' current behavior. So what should be the right frequency of refreshing data? And uh, is there a decay in metrics? Is there, um, is the user's, has the user's perception changed since the model was last trained? And should we refresh it continuously? And that is something which we might need to iterate on a couple of times to reach the right cadence and the right volume, et cetera, of uh, data refreshes for the ML model. Now, going forward, like stage four, what are the offline and online metrics for evaluating the ML product? So the most common ones which we use is like precision and recall. And uh, precision is basically like from the results that we are showing to user, how many of them are actually right results. Uh, similarly, recall is like from the entire corpus of relevant results, how many are we able to capture and show them to a user? There are many other metrics for other regression algorithms like uh, mean squared error, etc. That when you are predicting a number, what's the EDA to reach a destination? How much should this trip cost? How much surcharge should apply, etc. So these are the offline metrics that we can uh, calculate uh, with an ML model. But once an ML model has been deployed and users are using it, we have a lot of online metrics as well, like the usage pattern of users, the experimentation scorecards, work reports, uh, impact on product not stack metrics. It's a big list of online metrics as well, which I'll add for offline feed. And uh, both of offline and online metrics can uh, be used to uh, evaluate how is model actually performing. Is it performing as per your expectations or is there some difference which we again then again uh, need to go back and iterate on uh, now going forward to our uh, second topic in the agenda which is the trade-offs that we need to consider while building an ML product so there are uh, these five things that we will go by go through one by one the first is explainability versus complexity so um, like there are simple models like decision trees, et cetera, which are more easily explainable. And there are a complex model like deep learning algos, which are complex, they require more data, but you don't need to create your own features for deep learning models. So uh, with that in mind, there are different trade-offs that we need to consider. For example, in enterprise products, uh, they have a lower tolerance for incorrect predictions. Um, it is easier to debug if the model is more explainable. And uh, users often also ask, like, why am I seeing this uh, in case of noisy suggestions? And they want to tweak the behavior if necessary. So uh, for that, um, model responses should be predictable and understandable. And uh, for that, probably simpler algorithms like decision trees, classification rules, et cetera, might be more useful. But in case there is a lot of data, we don't know what the features are and uh, we want to invest. Then, then in that case, we might want to invest in a complex model, uh, for example, deep learning algorithms. So deep algorithms um, need to like need a lot of data to perform, uh, just as uh, well as some like uh, simpler uh, algorithms. Um, it, it it takes like tens of millions of data points, if not more. So um, if we have that kind of data, if if we have that kind of like if our, our product is at that evolved stage that we can get the, those data points it might make sense to invest in uh, these complex algorithms but um like with hand engineered features and some decision tree based algorithms we can reach to almost similar level of performance with a 
higher level of explainability as well. So the second trade-off is cost versus accuracy. So the major uh, questions to consider in this are like, what's the tolerance level for mistakes in a prediction? So if uh, we uh, want more data, uh, if we want more accuracy, then we, might, we need more data, more hardware computation, more complex software is required. Even the training and deployment costs increase. So how much investment is necessary for that marginal um, increase in accuracy? Is it really important to get that marginal increase in accuracy? Or we can live with like lower levels of accuracy and do the cost justify um, um, the does the does the cost uh, higher cost justify the need of higher accuracy? So that's one question to consider here. The second is like what's the accepted latency? So most accurate models like neural networks etc have times in milliseconds, while simpler models like linear regression have inference time in nanoseconds. So in our product over millions of queries etc, it might add up to high latency. So we need to identify that if we are using a more complex model which might have like higher latency. Does that justify uh, the accuracy that we are getting out of it? Just that justify um, the like um, the output or the requirement of the ML at that uh, of that ML algorithm at that stage for the product. So these are the other trade-offs, uh, precision versus recall. Uh, and it basically depends on what is more costly for you. Is returning a wrong result more costly for you? Do we want all results that are returned to be exactly right? So is precision more important for users? Or is missing out a relevant results? Is coverage more important for users? And in that case, recall might be a more important uh, thing to consider. And uh, we need to discuss like how, how do we balance precision versus recall for uh, uh, for the product at that point of time. And the second is like operational cost. So it, it takes a lot of cost to uh, maintain the uh, models, host the models, maintain data pipelines, have continuous compute, uh, latency impact is there. So uh, that is also an important trade-off to consider whether we need to invest in ML or do we need to go with rules, et cetera. And the last is like, how do we accommodate for failure and feedback? So that, that basically means that do we have a backup when ML fails? For example, ML breaking will not create alerts. It will just reduce the quality of the product. Instead of giving good recommendations, it might start giving bad recommendations. So how do we identify that quickly and solve for it during the de development stage itself? Now going to the third and the final topic in our agenda, which is like ethics and AI. So we'll look at some like sc scary usages of AI and principles to use AI uh, resp responsibly. So uh, looking at some of the awful usages, scary usages of AI, uh, I've listed down some of the examples here. I've also linked it to the uh, parent uh, uh, GitHub link, which has, uh, which is maintaining all the usages of uh, scary usages of AI as of now. So uh, as you can see here, like the, there is uh, AI based KDAR, which is built, which can accurately guess uh, whether people are gay or straight based on photos of their faces. And that uh, it's, it's based on a new research that suggests that machines have a significantly better KDAR than humans. And uh, we can see how it might infringe on the privacy of people. And it's, it's a scary, unethical usage of AI at this point of time. So uh, infer genetic diseases from face. So um, there is an algorithm which can identify some rare genetic disorders using photograph of a patient's face. This could lead to like payers and employers potentially analyzing facial images and discriminating against individuals who have pre-existing conditions or are developing medical complications, etc. Uh, you can, there is an auto grading uh, auto grading algorithm in UK, which was which is used to like uh, uh, predict uh, students' performance at the beginning of semester based on historical data, and it is uh, found to be biased against students of poorer backgrounds because the data which is which it is being trained on um, shows those kind of patterns, and it learns them without realizing the repercussions of such uh, predictions. Uh, then deep fakes, deep fakes combines and superimposes existing images and videos onto like source images and videos. And that can create like fake celebrity, pornographic content, revenge porn, scam businesses, etc. Et and we have a 
fake news bots uh, these are something which are used to like spread fake news which can manipulate stock markets make people choose dangerous healthcare options and manipulate elections as well so uh, based on uh, like these uh, um, how ai can be used for really scary usages for really unethical usages uh, we've compiled um, the responsible ml principles that we should keep in mind um and these mainly deal with designing systems with human in the loop to check the impact of incorrect predictions if there is a human in the loop they can uh, they can catch those incorrect predictions those kinds of biases earlier in the system uh, earlier in the process and can help to correct those predictions tweak the ml model to correct the predictions as well uh we need to evaluate the bias in models continuously uh continuously improve the transparency and explainability of machine learning systems um enable uh, for a reasonable level of reproducibility and predictability to the model for example if it performs in one way for one user it should probably uh, operate it in a, in a similar way in a reproducible predictable way for others as well so what is the displacement strategy uh, we need to think about mitigating the impact towards workers who are being automated because of these ml and ai advancements uh, we need to think about protecting privacy of users as well to ensure uh, like the data model security is being taken into consideration during the development of these machine learning systems itself so uh, this was our uh, presentation on um, Uh, machine learning and ai for product managers i hope it was useful for you thank you it was great to be here